It has been a trying season for Don Shula, mostly because 11 different starters, four on defense and seven on offense, have missed games due to injuries. The last week against Joe and the Jets, the Dolphins appeared at first to have everything under control. After a close inspection of the Shea Stadium turf, Joe Namath decided it was time for a little landscaping. Having established a firm foothold, Namath accounted for the only score of the first half with a play-action rollout pass to a 6-5 tight end Rich Caster, number 88. The third period belonged to another number 12, Bob Greasy, whose style is substantially different from Joe Namath's. Bob Greasy can scramble and he can run. Last Sunday, when he saw a way to the end zone, he ran for it. Greasy's touchdown tied the game at seven. And except for a New York field goal, there was no more scored until midway in the fourth period when Greasy threw a lateral pass to wide receiver Nat Moore who did a pretty good job of getting the ball downfield to the other wide receiver, Paul Warfield. From the six, Greasy turned what appeared to be a broken play into an easy six-pointer to Jim Kick. Miami led 14 to 10, but with five minutes left in the game, Joe Namath turned the clock back about a half a dozen years. As number 88 Rich Caster said after the game, we showed them a formation they hadn't seen all day. They got mixed up and I got wide open behind them. Caster's sixth reception and second touchdown gave the Jets a 17-14 lead, but there was still plenty of time for Bob Greasy and the Dolphins to come back. For the second week in a row, number 47, Roscoe Word, killed off a final drive with an interception. The Jets had their third straight victory and the Dolphins, their third loss of the season. More losses than in the two previous seasons combined. While the Jets may have deserved the victory, the Dolphins can blame no one but themselves for the loss. For in the game, they committed numerous undolphin-like errors, including seven penalties and four fumbles. One by the usually sure-handed Larry Zarka, and two by equally sure-handed Jake Scott, who nullified the effectiveness of his two interceptions. The Miami errors were not limited to the offense and defense, for the usually impeccable Dolphin special teams also aired at least four times. Perhaps the most telling error came with two minutes remaining, when for the second time in the game, the Dolphins were denied the ball because of running into the punter. There are many reasons why one team wins or another loses, and no one knows this better than Don Shula and a new winner named Charlie.